click on Miss Hathaway's notes that she left for you today. Anytime you need to pause this video, just pause it and you can catch up if I go too fast. If you have questions, what you need to do is get a, a post-it note and write your questions down. If you guys will post them up on the board on the side, um, I'll come by after school and pick those notes up and I'll address them the next day. Okay, so we're going to be talking about the structure of the atom first. And you guys should remember a lot of this stuff from your previous classes. So before we can talk about the atom, we have to talk about pure substances. And in, in particular, we can have pure substances or we can have mixtures. The vast majority of crap on the planet is mixtures. But we've found that there are about 92 naturally occurring chemicals or substances that when we try to break them down, we can't break them down anymore. And these things are called elements. So an element is a pure substance that is made of only one type of atom. When you talk about these atoms here, they can't be separated into um, anything else by normal chemical means. So we can dump all sorts of chemicals on them, all sorts of stuff on them, and they they you can't make it any more of a simpler substance. So elements can be separated by ordinary chemical means. More specifically, we can break that down to the atom level and say atoms can't be separated by ordinary chemical means. We would have to go nuclear if we were going to try and do those atoms. When we look at these elements, we've got them organized on the periodic table over here. And they've had, there have been a lot of versions of the periodic table, but this is the one that you guys should be familiar with the most, and you have a periodic table in your room there. The periodic table is a chart of the chemical elements that displays the elements in rows horizontally and columns vertically. The rows are called periods, and I'm going to put an arrow this way, and the columns are called groups, and they go down this way. And if you look on your periodic table, and I know you can't see it on this little one, but if you look on your periodic table, the groups are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 18. So the periodic table is a chart of chemical elements that displays the elements in rows horizontally and columns vertically by similarities in their chemical properties. So it's arranged this way because of similarities in their properties. An atom is the smallest basic unit of a chemical element. <coughs> Now, within that atom, and you guys should know, again, you should be familiar with the atoms. You probably know the basic parts, the proton, the neutron, the electron. So we're just going to, this first part will probably just be a review for you guys. The nucleus, and that word nucleus, it's not like the nucleus of a cell. In the nucleus of a cell, there's an actual thing there with a nuclear membrane, right? In the nucleus of the atom, there's no thing, there's no container that holds the little parts inside here. It's just not there. The word nucleus in this case just means it's the center area. So the nucleus of the atom holds the subatomic. Okay, here's a new word for you, subatomic particles. So we have atomic size, and then if it's smaller than atomic size, we have subatomic. So the particles that are inside the nucleus, you guys should know this, these are protons. And I usually abbreviate them with a little lowercase letter p with a plus beside it. And we have neutrons. And these are usually abbreviated with an N with a little superscript or exponent with an O on it. So the electrons are smaller subatomic particles that spin around. The electrons are actually orbiting, and I'm using that word orbit loosely. The electrons are actually orbiting the nucleus. I usually abbreviate electron with a lowercase letter E and a negative sign. They spin around in electron shells that are outside the nucleus. Electron shells are also called energy levels. Okay, I'm throwing a lot of little um, abbreviations at you because in science a lot of times we don't, we're lazy. We don't want to write all that crap out, so we abbreviate stuff. And in this case, always in science, capital E is talking about some kind of energy. So electrons orbit in these little shells or energy levels and orbitals. So the subatomic particles in their charges. So let's go over what we just wrote here. The protons are positive. Um, usually it's a lowercase letter p with a plus beside it, and the location is the nucleus. Neutrons are no charge. I'm, I'm going to put a zero here with a line through it. They're neutral. 
neutrons, they don't have an electrical charge. So when we talk about the charges of these, these things, we're talking things like electricity, if you think of it like that. The symbol is typically a lowercase letter n with a zero beside it, and it's also in the nucleus. The electrons are negative. The symbol is typically a lowercase letter e with a negative sign beside it, and the location is outside the nucleus. You could put energy levels, you could put orbiting, um, let's put orbiting. The nucleus. Okay. So we've got the basic structure of the atom and we've got all the places where we can find the pieces on there. Now these subatomic particles are really, really important because they help identify which, which atom it is here. So the numbers of subatomic particles, the numbers of proton, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons in a neutral atom. Because one is positive, the protons are positive, the electrons are negative. In order for the atom to have no charge, you have to have equal positives and negatives. Um, if you think about your math class, positive one plus negative one is zero. Because the number of positive charges is going to be the same as the number of negative charges. The number of protons is also known as the atomic number. This is a really important number because this helps us to identify what the substance is here. The atomic number is the identity of the element. There it is right there. For example, only one element on the whole stink of periodic table has the atomic number of nine, and that would be fluorine. Um, what's the element with the atomic number of 79? Well, I would get my periodic table out, and these numbers right up here are the atomic numbers. Not all periodic tables are set up the same way. Some of them have the numbers arranged differently, but the number that's the nice pretty whole number, no decimal stuff, the nice pretty whole number, that's the atomic number. So when we look down here to find number 79, number 79 is AU. And if you guys remember from your eighth grade science stuff, AU is gold. So number 79 is gold, and that's AU. The number of neutrons, the number of neutrons can be kind of crazy. It can be really close to the number of protons. It can be hugely more on that. But the number of neutrons, for the most part, is close, but not always the same as the number of protons. OK, let's flip the page. And we're going to go up through number 10, and then we'll stop there at number 10. So let's see. Examples, oxygen's atomic number. So take out your periodic table, pause this a minute, get your periodic table out. If you find this, you should know that oxygen is O, oxygen's atomic number is 8. It has 8 protons, and a neutral atom of oxygen has 8 electrons. Sodium Na's atomic number, if you find sodium, it's number 11, so that means it's got 11 protons. It has 11 protons and 11 electrons. Now, in chemistry and in IPC, we talk a lot about the structure of the atom, but the vast majority of chemistry is going to be talking about, it's all about the electrons. So when we talk about chemical reactions a little bit later, it's really all about the electrons. The proton number tells us what element it is, but the electrons really are what's used in chemical reactions. The element with the atomic number 20, if you look right here, it's Ca. Ca is calcium. It has 20 protons and 20 electrons. Subatomic particles like protons and electrons are so small that scientists had to create a special unit just for weighing them. I mean tiny, 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 tiny. It, they're so small it's really difficult for us to wrap our brain around how small they are. In this case it's called the atomic mass unit or AMU, atomic mass unit. So if we look at hydrogen it has uh, one proton 
And if you look right here, it has an atomic mass unit number of 1.008. Scientists made it easy. Each proton and each neutron weighs approximately 1 AMU. Not exactly, but approximately 1 AMU. Added together, the protons and the neutrons give an atom its mass number. Now, sometimes they call it the atomic mass number. I don't like to say it as atomic mass number because it's really easy to get the atomic number confused with the atomic mass number. So I usually call them the atomic number for the number of protons and the mass number for the number of protons plus neutrons. Electrons, they are so freaking small that their mass doesn't even register. It, it's not even counted. So w when we say, well, how much does the atom weigh? We don't even take into account the electrons. They're so tiny. They're like one, one thousand eight hundredth of the mass of one proton. So you would have to have one thousand eight hundred electrons to make the mass of one proton. That's why we can say Psh, we don't even care. So the mass number is only protons plus neutrons. Now, again, you guys are going to ultimately take chemistry, and we use that mass number a lot. So we really use the numbers of electrons, and we really use the number of uh, the mass number there. The stuff that's in, let's see, the nucleus. So the mass number we use because we can figure out from that, we use this thing called the mole, and we can figure out how much stuff we need to put in the chemical reaction. So the mass number is only, 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 only protons plus neutrons. So if you look right here, she's got a little bit here. The mass number is protons plus neutrons, or the mass number minus the protons will give you the neutrons, right? If we take the mass number and subtract out the neutrons, what we have left are the protons. If you know the number of protons is 9 and the mass number is 19, you can figure out the number of neutrons. So look at this. This is what she's setting up right here. You've got a mass number of 19. You have a proton number of 9. 19 minus 9 is 10. So that means that you have 10 neutrons. And you can, if you subtract those, you have 10 neutrons. So you can figure out the number of neutrons by subtracting the protons from the mass number to get the number of neutrons. I'm going to put 10 in parentheses because I think I kind of jumped the gun on that one. So in this case, again, we have the mass number of 19 minus 9 protons, and we get 10 neutrons. Here's what it looks like when you put in abbreviations. The protons plus the neutrons, that's going to equal the mass number. Examples, oxygen has eight protons and eight neutrons. So the mass number is protons plus neutrons, and we get 16. And it's A m used because we're talking about little bitty tiny pieces there. Sodium has 11 protons and 12 neutrons. When we add those together, we get 23 amu. Calcium has 20 protons. It has a mass of 40. So here's the mass number. Mass number minus out the protons. That gives us the neutrons. You're always going to have three numbers there. Um, and if they have three numbers, you should be able to solve for one. And don't tell me you can't do math because every single one of you guys can add two numbers together and figure it out, or you can subtract. And that's all this is, adding and subtracting. So calcium has 20 protons. Its mass number is 40. So 40 is the mass number, minus 20 is the protons, and we get 20 neutrons. Scandium, okay, scandium, if you look at scandium, it's right here. Scandium has an atomic number of 21, so it has 21 protons. Its mass number is 45, so it must have, so we take 45 minus 21, and we get 24, that's not even right, how about 34? 34 neutrons. So 45 minus 21, I think you guys have calculators in there, so don't tell me you can't do this one, and we get 34 neutrons. And we will start on number 11 tomorrow.